This is a continuation of my notifications under USC uh, Title 18, U.S. Code Section 4, called misprision of a felony, but really it actually is notification of felonies to avoid misprision of a felony. I attempted to notify every military or civil authority that was appropriate considering where the crimes took place. How many crimes? Well, it's probably up to more than 30 now, but it was 22 throughout these attempts. The judge, Annette Turek, who I'm moving to disqualify because she elected to ignore the law. The law says that I am supposed to report it to a judge and there is an implied expectation that whoever I report it to will you take it and move it to the appropriate investigative authority for federal crimes. Now, it does not distinguish between a state judge and a federal judge because they all have a duty to the U.S. Constitution. They have typically taken an oath to obey the state constitution and the U.S. Constitution. And Judge Turek just blatantly disregarded it, even though it involved the only witness I had in my case as to the first four felonies, and her darling bailiff that she intentionally brought, knowing that he had beaten me up. Um, yeah, he has a felony for beating me up, for false arrest, for conspiracy, for all kinds of good things that probably can be added to the ones he's already got. And she says it has nothing to do with the case at hand. She lied in open court. That alone disqualifies her from being further a judge in my case. She is corrupt. She is a criminal in my eyes. I don't know that we'll prosecute her because we are a criminal nation. Because when I fail with Judge Turek, I'd already failed. It's, it now has become clear with the FBI Greenville field office. They were sitting on what appeared to be a hostage potential situation and they weren't going to check it out. And in fact, at the 27-day mark, they still hadn't checked it out, but they accused me of taking too much of their time, so they didn't have time to check on a hostage after 27 days. How outrageous are these FBI guys? They need to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. So they refuse it. That's a civil authority. So I went at that point after Judge Turek did what she did on May 6th, I went straight to the gate at Seymour Johnson Air Force Base because the victim is highly connected to the U.S. Air Force, having volunteered for the U.S. Air Force for 50 plus years and having gotten several awards that I know about. She was married to an exemplary mechanic that took her all over the world because he worked out of embassies. He was a special mechanic. For her last 28 years of volunteering, she was a tax preparer, but not just any tax preparer, because she lasted 28 years, and she knew the tax code, so she became their expert, because people could not justify sweating through doing tax returns year in, year out, only she did it. And yet, when I went to the base to try to get them to accept the notice under 18 U.S.C. 4 through the um, officer who was in charge of the base, a man I wasn't sure who it was for, for any certainty, so I called him base commander. They never said who he was either. They, they stopped me. They had no intent of allowing him to be uh, brought into it. They seemingly made the decision, not the base commander. So I went to a lawyer in town who gave me a favor because one thing, she was a former U.S. Air Force paralegal, Martha Beach. She called two times. She called when I was there at my insistence to call again because she called the staff judge advocate who 
was told the two times I was there that it was an urgent matter. The staff judge advocate, of course, knew what it was from my visit to the gate and elected not to return the call. Most unprofessional, most unethical, and actually potentially criminal. Yep, criminal, because you don't have the right to disobey the U.S. Constitution. She was breaching the oath of office for any officer or any soldier to obey, obey the U.S. Constitution. They took two, two weeks of my time trying to get what I thought was an open and shut acceptance and all they did was hide under their desk like the cowards and fools that they were. So I had to go to their superior, General James Holmes. He goes by Mike, okay, General Mike Holmes. General Mike Holmes, I know has, his staff has already uh, knew, known about it. They gave an order, ultimately, when they did, after a week of not doing anything, not accepting it and blocking it, they gave an order to the base commander who I found out for certain who it was. It was the 4th Fighter Wing Commander, who I knew who he was, Colonel Don Yates. Well, it turns out he's the anonymous base commander because the Fighter Wing controls everything at Seymour Johnson. Well, turns out someone gave him an order, not just any order, an order on Memorial Day on Memorial Day at his private number on his family time as he ultimately told me to do what he was supposed to do to begin with because it should not have gotten up to General Holmes or something of the like and instead Colonel Yates called me having been given my number by Air Combat Command somebody there and having given an order that he better do it immediately so he used his personal phone or his military phone that he takes home with him and acted like he wanted to do the right thing, but ultimately made it clear that I had to retract the failures of the two of them, Lieutenant Colonel Elizabeth Sprecher, the staff JAG, and himself as to uh, failing to do what is required under the law. I told him the facts remain what the facts are. I cannot change them and all. And he said, in that case, I'm not going to go any further. And he hung up the phone. It was over. He was not going to do his job because I wouldn't change my testimony. Well, guess what? Colonel Yates, that's obstruction of justice, refusing to do your job. And as to a witness, you don't get to, you don't have the right to tell a witness to change their story. There's a major felony there, too. Tampering with a witness is his testimony. There's probably a multitude of felonies. But I at least talked to him, and I knew not to bother to call him back because he would take great offense. So I called the base after the holiday was over. And amazingly enough, despite the fact that Martha Beach couldn't talk to anybody there, I talked to a lawyer. They immediately connected me to a lawyer. But the lawyer was not just any lawyer. It was Lieutenant Colonel Elizabeth Sprecher, who ultimately made it clear that she had about the same attitude. She was not really in good faith. They were guilty. They were guilty of doing bad things and it's one of those things that you really can't believe it until they do it she refused to cooperate and she put on a sergeant to return the favor of me telling her that you've got to live up to 18 usc 4 that idiot lawyer an idiot is a nice word for what she was, claimed that military authority did not include the commander of an Air Force base. This law was written in 1790, and they would have clearly known that the commander of an Air Force base 
was indeed a military authority. And for him to turn it down and for her to turn it, to tell him to turn it down, they each are guilty of breach of their oath of office and all the attendant crimes that go with that. So I ultimately knew I had to go ahead and continue making notifications. And I made it to the sheriff and the um, police chief who had multiple felonies and already were identified as part of those that needed to be arrested, Her, their men, and they seemed to be a part of it. And I was correct because they have done nothing. They have now shown that they have no desire to have their men brought forward. I also notified the DA, whose office was extraordinarily hostile to me, and I did not expect the DA to do anything. So I went up to the U.S. attorney uh, who, who oversees the FBI Greenville field office as DOJ oversees it, sees the FBI. They have a lot of say. I was told Bobby Higdon, which is the name of the U.S. attorney in informal terms, would have nothing to do with my 18 U.S.C. 4 and the fact that a life is being killed. So, Mr. Attorney General, I know you don't know anything about this, but you have corrupt people in the military and in the civil authority, the civil authority that you oversee, among other places, U.S. Attorney Robert J. Higdon Jr. and the F three guys at the FBI Greenville office who have sat on a hostage taking and are waiting till she dies before they look in on her. Mr. Barr... I know you to be a genius of a lawyer. I've heard your words. You know what you're doing. But here, you did not know this is going on. I hope you accept 18 U.S.C. 4 as the law of our nation. It has been shortened, but it always included telling a judge or other civil or military authority if you knew of a felony. And it always included, if you didn't do it, it's misprision of a felony. You're now been told that a whole mass of authorities from my judge and the case that she testified in to the head of the, the man who controls all the military uh, fighter aircraft of the United States Air Force have failed to do their job. Yes, General Holmes is guilty because I'm sure from the fact that Colonel Yates jumped to attention that his staff knows and if his staff knows under military protocol they had to inform him so he knows and he knows that he has failed to do his job and he thought that he could push it back on J Colonel Yates who refused to do his job without obstruction of justice and tampering with witnesses so that he did not appear to be as guilty as he is that Colonel Yates needs to be prosecuted. Lieutenant Colonel Elizabeth Sprecher needs to be investigated, and if there are laws broken, prosecuted. Even General Holmes may have a problem. We can get another general, General Holmes. If you don't want to live up to the law, you should be removed. You broke your oath to the U.S. Constitution. You should resign right now. So... Attorney General Barr, I'm going to have to put a rather harsh title to this. I can't even be sure what it will be at the moment, but it will be about a supervision of murder by your DOJ through the FBI and through the U.S. attorney, except it's actually a lack of supervision. This is shocking, and my friend's going to die because the Air Force and the FBI before them and God knows all these other people, I've named most of them, have refused to do their duties under 18 U.S. Code 4, Section 4, and it's very simple law. But they say, we're not going to do it. It doesn't apply to us. I've never heard of it. You've read the law by now, each and every one of you, and you refuse to follow it. And there is no case law that supports you. I have looked, and there has been no cases since I looked. So you have no case law to depend upon, and the plain language you have violated 
resulting probably in my friend's death unless Attorney General Barr follows my request to Donald Trump that I get involved and make sure that she is medically protected because I know what she needs if you all can't get a doctor to tell you what doctors to get I know what doctors we need so Attorney General Barr continue showing your intellect and stop this and fire that U.S. attorney, indicate to uh, General Holmes that he had better have a good reason for not following the law. Same thing with Colonel Yates, Lieutenant Colonel Sprecher, and all the civil ones as well. But save Henny Carlisle this very moment that you read this. Get right on it. Write me at kidnapper at gmail.com. My other name was Fight the Corrupt. Well, Google killed that email, but I am also now Fight All Corrupt. So write Fight All Corrupt at gmail.com if you prefer, because I am Fight the Corrupt, All the Corrupt, and Incarcerate All the Corrupt. Save Henny Carlisle. Please save Henny Carlisle. This is insane that our country is supervising a murder by not supervising it, by not stopping it. How God, how God has allowed America to come to this level is insane. God help our country. If these are our leaders, thank God for Attorney General Barr, who is not the fool that his U.S. attorney here in the Eastern District of North Carolina happens to be. All of you govern yourselves accordingly and start hiding under your desks because somebody's going to come and indict you. Bye-bye. Save Henny Carlisle today.